Megatherium was a prehistoric ground sloth. Its name comes from Greek, meaning great beast, and what a beast it was. One species, known as the giant ground sloth Megatherium americanum, weighed up to 4 tons, or 8,800 pounds. It measured 5 meters or 20 feet from head to tail, and had a shoulder height when on all fours of 2.1 meters, or 6 feet 11 inches. The genus survived in the Americas during the Pliocene and throughout the Pleistocene. They became extinct 12,000 years ago, along with much of America's megafauna. The giant ground sloth evolved in South America, cut off from the other continents. The animals in this part of the world evolved into some incredible specimens that fascinate scientists today. When the Central American land bridge formed 3 million years ago, the fauna was able to move between North and South America. As ground sloths migrated northwards, they gave rise to new species of sloth, such as Megalonyx, a 10-foot, 2,200-pound animal that reached as far north as Alaska. Megatherium largely walked on all fours, on the sides of their feet. Their large claws prevented them from placing their feet flat on the ground. They could move their hind legs and stand, using their tail for balance, to reach leaves and branches high up in the trees. Some suggest that, like modern-day elephants, Megatherium was hairless owing to its huge body size and propensity to overheat. Others depict it as having long, shaggy fur. Unlike today's sloths that are small in comparison and live in trees, the giant ground sloths, as their name suggests, resided on the ground. With the genus surviving and thriving for millions of years, the question arises, could Megatherium survive nowadays? We know the planet is a very different place from the Pliocene and Pleistocene, but could the diet, habitats, and climate that are available today be suitable for this prehistoric giant? Let's consider each. Firstly, diet. Modern-day sloths are omnivores. They eat leaves and twigs up in the trees, as well as seed pods, but they also eat insects and occasionally other small vertebrates. But for Megatherium, the question of diet is not so clear-cut. Scientific research analyzed the collagen of fossilized bones from Megatherium. From this, it was suggested that Megatherium was exclusively vegetarian. It was able to stand on its hind legs to reach up to the highest branches of trees. It would then use its huge claws to pull down branches for them to feed on the leaves. Being so big and being able to reach so tall, Megatherium probably had little competition for food, as smaller herbivores wouldn't have been able to browse so high. The giant ground sloths had powerful, robust jaws and strong teeth which would have enabled them to feed on tough vegetation. They may have used their long claws to dig up roots as well. However, some believe it was omnivorous like its modern-day relatives. Its seven-inch claws could have been used to take down prey or rip meat from a carcass. Like their smaller tree-dwelling descendants, they were slow-moving. To eat meat, they would either have to scavenge or hunt other slow-moving animals. Some suggest they actively hunted and ate the armadillo-like animals, Galiptodonts. Flipping these armored herbivores over and then using their claws to kill it has been suggested by some, but there is no fossil evidence for this. Only what can be concluded from the animal's dentition. Their teeth were sharper and triangular shaped rather than flat. This suggests that they were used for cutting and grinding. It is not implausible to suggest that they occasionally fed on carrion in order to supplement their otherwise vegetarian diet. Whether Megatherium ate meat or not remains a matter of debate, but one thing is for sure. It predominantly relied on plant matter to sustain its huge body size. Modern-day sloths feed on leaves and flowers from plants, such as the trumpet tree and barragon. They have adapted to life in the trees. Hanging upside down for most of the day, they rarely travel along the ground, and when they do, it isn't for foraging or browsing like their giant ancestors. It is likely that the giant sloths fed on similar flora and were able to reach up high to the branches that modern-day sloths consume. Some of the foliage found throughout North and South America, such as conifers and oak, were available when Megatherium was alive. It may have browsed these plants and would still be able to today but their quantity might not be enough to sustain a healthy population of giant ground sloths. These animals ate vast volumes of food every day to maintain their huge size. If they were alive today, their impact on the habitat might be akin to elephants, 
which are sometimes culled to prevent them from damaging too many trees in an area. They may also outcompete other herbivorous animals that have adapted to a similar niche. Next, we need to consider the climate and habitat for Megatherium. Megatherium inhabited woodland and grassland habitats. Towards the end of the Pleistocene, they lived in the South American Pampas, an area rich in fertile soil, characterized by vast, open grassland plains. If Megatherium was alive today, it would need to have access to untouched forests and open grasslands. The vegetation cover of South, Central, and North America has changed considerably since the Pleistocene. Although some species of plants that we know today were around during the Pleistocene, there have been dramatic shifts in plant life. When the Earth went through several glacial and interglacial cycles, the climate changed. As the climate cooled and glaciers expanded, more moisture was locked up as ice. This resulted in less precipitation and more arid conditions across most of North and South America. Megatherium would have survived the climate changes. The genus was able to adapt to the fluctuating levels of rainfall and temperature changes. The vegetation during the Pliocene was largely forested. It consisted of lowland rainforests, montane forests, and rainforests. Later on in the Pleistocene, grassland savannas replaced tropical forests in the southern Amazon basin. The repeated cycle of humid and arid conditions dramatically changed the vegetation. During the last glacial maximum, 20,000 years ago, the temperature was cooler, precipitation limited, and carbon dioxide levels lower than today, all of which affected plant life. Isolated, fragmented, forested regions affected the biota that lived within them. Glaciers created physical boundaries that restricted animals from migrating. This historical landscape influenced the flora and fauna found throughout the Americas today. But could Megatherium live in the climate and habitat dominant in North and South America these days? Today, most of South America is covered in tropical, temperate, and dry desert biomes. It is home to the longest mountain range in the world. Megatherium survived the fluctuating temperatures and changing climate throughout the Pliocene and Pleistocene. It is difficult to say whether this giant omnivore would be able to cope with our ever-warming modern world. The habitats available throughout the Americas are more fragmented than ever. The Amazon rainforest covers 40% of South America and the savannas more than 800,000 square miles. But would this be enough? It is plausible to think that Megatherium could survive the climate today, given that the genus survived such a range of conditions and environmental changes over the millennia. But overall, despite the wetter conditions of the Pliocene and subsequent glacial and interglacial cycles during the Pleistocene, the last 2 million years of Megatherium's existence was 5 to 10 degrees Celsius cooler than it is today. If given the time, the genus may be able to adapt to the warmer temperatures we experience nowadays. In conclusion, we think the giant ground sloth would struggle to survive today. Fossil records show that these incredible animals were hunted by man. It is generally accepted that climate change as well as hunting led to the demise of America's megafauna at the turn of the epoch. But in the case of ground sloths, there is extensive evidence of human interference. Maybe, if given protection from hunting, the right space, and vegetation, this prehistoric giant could survive in sanctuaries, but they would be unlikely to survive in the wild. They have had their time, and like so many other animals after them, their decimation has been, at least partly, due to humans and their activities, which is a sad thing to consider. That's all for today! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.